everyone, this is Ms. Rickfelder, and I'm going to be working on a lesson for least common multiple today. We're still working on the standard 6.NS.4, and that's a number sense a standard. I'm going to go over the standard in just a moment. Um, but this should be the second piece in a series of three videos for this standard. So let's go ahead and take a look at this standard. If you're in my class, then you've already written this standard down um, on the second page of your notebook, so you don't need to write the entire standard again. But in the top right corner, as I indicated, you do need to write 6.NS.4. So we're going to ignore the first part of this because we've already talked about finding the greatest common factor of two whole numbers. So we've already done that, and we're going to skip right to the three parts I've underlined. So it says, and the least common multiple of two whole numbers less than or equal to 12. And then the last piece is about the distributive property, which will not be the focus of this video. So now what we're going to be doing, um, so what does each word really mean in least common multiple? So just like we did for greatest common factor, let's go ahead and look at least. What does that mean? Well, that means that it's the lowest, it's the smallest, or it has the least value, obviously. Common, just like it did with um, greatest common factor, it means the same, shared, or both have it. And then multiple is where it gets tricky because a lot of people can do the least common multiple or greatest common factor, but then have problems differentiating in the actual problems themselves. So a multiple, obviously, is you're going to think multiply. And the main point is it can't be smaller than the numbers themselves. So what I really need you to write on your first page that you already have um, titled, least common multiple, I need you to really focus on the multiple part. So write multiple. So you're going to go ahead and write this right here. And then I'd like you to write these two pieces right here. So I want you to remember when you're looking for a multiple, it's got to be the same as or bigger than both of your numbers. So I'll show you what I mean. So here we have the number 5. So let's go ahead and look at the multiples of 5. So we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30. Perfect. Now we're going to look at the multiples of 6. So we're going to start with the, the multiple itself, 6, or the number itself. We have 6, 12, 18, 24, and 30. So I do want you to go ahead and write these two examples down. So go ahead and write those down now, and you can see I placed a little icon there in the top right corner that said write this down. So make sure that you write that on your notebook just under where you wrote multiples. And now we're going to go ahead and look at the least, that means the smallest of all of these numbers, common, that means they both have it, multiple, that means you had to multiply by 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 to get there. So notice that the least common multiple in this problem is going to be 30. So I'd like you to go ahead and write what I have written here on the screen, please. It says, so the smallest, least, common, both have it, multiple, number found by multiplying is 30. So I know that's kind of a long sentence, but I only need you to write it this one time. So this particular method here that I just showed you is actually called the list method. So you want to write that on your paper. And I'm sure that you can assume that it's called the list method because all you do is write the actual number itself and then you list all of the multiples. So that's easy enough to remember. Now we're going to go ahead and piggyback on the ladder method, which if you're in Ms. Rickfelder's class, me, my class, then you learned about the ladder method when we talked about the greatest common factor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take two numbers and we're going to use the ladder method and I'm going to show you how to find the least common multiple instead of just the greatest common factor. So remember, if you were in my class, the first thing that you want to do is you want to write the numbers that you're given. So this question is going to ask the least common multiple of 9 and 12. So our first step is going to write going to be to write 9 and 12 on the same line. And then remember you write the, or you draw the L. That's the ladder method. That's how you remember that that's the ladder method. Then remember your very next step is going to be to find the least or lowest prime number that you can divide out of both of them. So remember, prime numbers are ones that cannot be divided or broken down any further other than 0 and 1, which we're not talking about. So the least or lowest prime number that we have is 2. Can we take 2 out of both 9 and 12? We can't. So now we're going to go ahead and look to the next one, which is 3. We can, in fact, take 3 out. So when we divide 3 divided by, I'm sorry, when we take 9 and divide it by 3, we say that it goes in 3 times. And we take 12 and divide it by 3, we say it goes in 4 times. Okay? And now we want to look at our numbers again. So for this problem, you have a greatest common multiple of 3. I'm sorry, a greatest common factor, sorry. A greatest common factor of 3. 
and that's because that's the only one that's on the outside right there. Now when we're talking about least common multiple, you're going to bubble in like an L, so for least common multiple. So now you have LCM is going to be equal to 3 times 3 times 4, which is going to be boom, boom, and boom. 3 times 3 is 9, times 4 is 36. So now you have the least common multiple for 9 and 12. So now we've looked at the ladder method and we've looked at the list method. So now in your notebooks, I want you to write down the following problem. So as you can see here, we have 8 and 12. I want you to try the list method with 8 and 12. So first you're going to list all of the multiples of 8, and then you're going to list all the multiples of 12. Um, now when I say all, because we're looking for the least common multiple, remember like we talked about in class, once we get to that one where they are the same, then we can stop. So if we look, we see 24 is the least common multiple. That's using the list method. Now I'm going to show you prime factorization. One more method before we wrap this video up. So when I show you the prime factorization, I want you to notice um, what happens. I'm going to use the same numbers, 8 and 12. So least common multiple using prime factorization. I do want you to write this method down in your, um, in your composition book, please. So now we're going to do 8 and 12, so you're going to write them next to each other, kind of far apart so that you can make the factor tree. So first we're going to say, okay, 4 times 2, I can multiply 4 times 2 to get 8, and then I can multiply 2 times 2 to get 4. So once I get to all prime numbers, 2, 2, and 2, then I can do that there. I can multiply 2 times 2 times 2, and now we have 12 breaks down into 6 times 2, and 6 further breaks down into 3 times 2. So now we're looking at 3 times 2 times 2. So, so now here's where it gets a little tricky. What you want to do is, notice I've lined them up, up and down. You want to do the same thing, so 8 and then 12. And then I want to line my prime factors up like that. Now, you're going to put a box around common factors. So right here, I boxed 2 times 2 and 2 times 2. Because the 2 and the 3 on the outside don't have partners, okay? So we're going to put a box around the, num the common factors, and we're going to list the numbers in each box once. So because we have this first 2 times 2 right here, that's where we're going to get this to. Now here, let me, okay, let me go ahead and erase this one here so that you can see. All right, so now see this box that I've done here because these two, um, we, 8 and 12 both share 2. I'm going to go ahead and do 2, and I'm going to change colors so you can see where this goes. So this box of 2 times 2 is going to give me this next 2. So what we're saying is because they're common to both of them, we're only going to list them once. So we list this one once and this one once. So now we're going to list everything else that's outside the box. So 2 times 3, and that's from this 2 and this 3, okay? Equals 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 3 is 24. And that is the prime factorization method. So that method is going to be a little trickier, I think, probably. But whichever method works best for you, you can use to find the least common multiple. Now, in the next video piece, I'm going to show you how to distinguish between how do you know when it's a least common multiple problem? How do you know when it's a greatest common factor problem? So see you next time.